everybody, this is Yuna, and today I want to share with you guys my birth story with my son. Alright, so to give you guys some backstory, if you guys haven't already seen some of my other videos where I talk about my child, I actually got pregnant with my son at the young age of 18. For all you young ladies out there, please use a condom when you have sex, no matter how much he begs. But that's a little off topic. So yeah, I got pregnant with my son when I was 18. This baby was like a ninja baby. I actually didn't even know I was really pregnant until like maybe four months into the process. I was determined to have this child with or without his father. You know, I talked about my first boyfriend in this video. So if you guys want a reference to that video, please go ahead later. We both made a choice and he didn't really want to be supportive. I didn't care about anybody else's opinion at the time. There was just a very strong connection between me and David. Oh, where I didn't care how hard it was going to be and I was very gun ho about having this child. I actually moved to Washington for a bit for my first boyfriend and then I moved back and pretty much as soon as I flew back I got my old job where I worked at the airport as a waitress slash bartender until the day I popped. I had to do whatever I can to make as much money as I can in order to have this baby. I was very naive like Google was not really much of a thing back in 2006 to 2007 nor did I think having a baby was cheap I don't know I just thought somehow I was gonna figure this out I worked every single day six days a week 12 hours a day racking up decent amount of money to make sure that I have enough money to take care of my baby as well as the babysitting fee for when I go back to college once after things settle down and then I can you know, get my bachelor's and everything. So my son was born at 5.54 p.m. on April 3rd. I was still working on April 3rd until about 1 a.m. So a quick side story is, I remember I went to the doctor, I think on March like 28th or 29th or something like that, and the doctor's just like, oh, you dilated. And prior to that, I had not watched any birthing videos just because I know myself. Like, I'm gonna freak the F out if I watch the video. So I literally didn't like want to watch anything on it. I'm the type of person that gives myself a lot of anxiety. Do I want to go skydiving? Hell yeah. Do I want to fall off a plane? No, not really. However, if I woke up on an airplane and they said, listen, the only way to go down safely is if you like jump now. Otherwise, we're just gonna have to keep flying up. Well, all right, this is the only way to go down. So back to March 27th or 28th, I was told that I dilated like three centimeters and I was like oh awesome and the doctor was just like go back home I was like okay and I had I literally had no idea what dilating meant or anything the following day I had work so I went to work and then the following day after that I still went to work the following day after that I continued to work and I remember this one waitress was just like oh you look so cute I didn't even realize you were pregnant she was lying because my belly was like out to here and she's like how far along are you and then I said oh I dilated about three centimeters and her face was just like she probably thought oh god poor knocked up girl gotta support her come April 3rd I had another doctor's appointment I went into the doctors and I laid down on the bed and I swear very graphic coming up this woman aka my doctor she's like stuck her arm so far up in there that I was just like what the hell is this I don't want to get too graphic but yeah no her her I was just not used to like you know something so aggressively going in anyways she's like oh your water broke and in my head I thought no you broke my water like I was fine coming here and she's like oh well I guess it's time for you to go to the hospital and then she's like here she gave me like a wee wee pad stick this in there right and I was like okay yeah I didn't know what to think I was obviously nervous and a little bit anxious and probably very scared to death I had not been prepared that this human was gonna like come out of me somehow Whew. So then I took a cab straight from her office to the hospital, into the emergency room, like literally walked. I think it was like the first time I ever went into emergency room too. Actually, no, that's not true. I like banged my head up as a kid, like bleeding from my head one time. But no, I, it was like the first time I went to an adult emergency room. It's nothing like how they show in the movies at all. Like I always thought, 
you know, there'd be like people coming around in like stretchers, oh, sketchers. People coming around in stretchers, people like roll around in wheelchairs, but it was nothing like that. It was very quiet. It was actually like really shady. It was, it was really dark, barely any lights were on. I wasn't sure if I entered through the right door, even though it said emergency room. And uh, there was like a reception and I, I was so confused because I'm like, wait, are we supposed to like check in like hotel? Like, hey, hi. And there was a line. There was like a one woman with like a line of people. And then there was this couple behind me. They tapped me and they said, my girlfriend got bit by a dog and she was crying. And then they showed me the mark, right? Honestly, it looked like, like a baby bit her, right? And she's just like, oh, like she's really upset and she's bleeding. It's not like one little pink mark. They said, oh, is it okay if we like go in front of you? Sh sure, yeah, why not? I'm just having a baby, you know, but I didn't say that to them I was like, yeah, sure, go ahead And then finally I get up to the, the women, right? Like after I let them come in I told the woman, I was like, hi, I'm in labor right now And she just looks at me and she says, honey, you didn't even look pregnant So then I unzip my jacket and I open up my jacket and she's just like I don't see nothing. So I turn to my side and then you see like this big watermelon size of a stomach like popping out. Like, oh, okay, I guess you are pregnant. It's like, all right, walk down there to the triage. I thought, okay, this is such a weird process. This is not how I pictured all of this to go down. I don't know what I pictured, but this was definitely not what I thought. So I walk into the triage and there's no one there. Like at this point, I swear I'm getting pumped. Like I'm, I'm literally pinching myself. I'm like, is this a dream? Like, I don't understand. This is not how I pictured hospitals to be. I sit there by myself for like a good 10 to 20 minutes. And then finally someone comes in. Are you the one giving birth? And I was like, yes. And then she said, here, pee in this cup. So then I go into the bathroom and at this point, I take out the wee, wee pad and nothing has been on it. Like there's literally like, no water or anything. So I was just like, oh, like maybe she didn't break my water. Maybe I was wrong. So then I stick the wee, wee pad into garbage and then now I'm trying to pee into the cup, right? I've done this before. I've peed before. I've peed in a cup before because when you're pregnant, every appointment they want to check your levels and your ECG levels. So they want to make sure everything's fine. I grabbed the cup and then I attempted to pee in it and out breaks my water and everything just goes whoosh. Oh, my water is broken. I check in the toilet just to make sure the baby didn't come out because the amount of water that I had exerted out of my body, I was pretty sure like a, some sort of a thing came out. So when I came out, the nurse was just like, oh, like where's the cup? And I was like, oh, he went down the toilet. So now here comes like the sort of interesting parts, right? I'm finally laying in a bed, right? After I've been to the hospital for like a good hour. At this point, it's about like 11 a.m. So I give my girlfriend Liz a call and she was just very supportive and just always said like, if you need anything, I'll be there. And she really wanted to be there for the birthing process and thank God she was. And you'll understand why later. Said, all right, called off that day and got in her car. I don't know how she did it. She went from New Jersey to Flushing within like 20 minutes, I think. I was just like, whoa, how the hell did you find me so quick? I'm laying there and I have like a whole bunch of things strapped to me. Some things like monitoring my heart something's monitoring the baby's heartbeat I have IV up like this vein because apparently I didn't have any like nice veins over here but they stuck like a giant ass needle here I'm pretty much just like strapped down then they finally take me out of the triage room I think around like 12 o'clock and put me in a room where a whole bunch of women had a c-section because they ran out of delivery rooms so they told me you can't make any noise you know at first I was like okay yeah sure I'll, I'll be nice I'll be considerate to the poor woman that I just gave birth via c-section However, once the contractions started coming in, holy crap, there was no way. I literally sounded like a poor puppy being punched because I was in so much pain. I couldn't make any noise and they kept shushing me. The nurses kept shushing me. Can you believe this? I literally was just whimpering the whole entire time instead. When you're in the birthing process, you literally cannot eat anything. You can't drink anything. The only thing you can put in your mouth is ice cubes or ice chips actually. I started to slowly have contractions. Like they kind of snuck up behind me. You know how like winter just comes out of nowhere and goes bam into your face if you live in New York. That's exactly what happened with me. It was just like all of a sudden it started to hurt and it hurt more and hurt even more. Now if you've never had a kid before, you always wonder, like, is child labor really that bad? The best way for me to describe how contractions feel like if someone had grabbed your insides, pulled it out, wrapped it around you, and just decided to like <laughs> snuff you from the outside, but within. It's pretty much you lose control of all your muscles and your muscles are just like ganging up against you all of a sudden. What the crap is this? All those muscles, what they're doing is that they're trying to push 
the baby out. You know, there's always a question of which one hurts more, the guy getting kicked in the nuts or a woman giving birth. Let me tell you, when you can repetitively get kicked in the nuts, like constantly for several hours, then we can talk about which one hurts more. So now it's about one o'clock and I'm whimpering. I don't know what life is anymore. I'm not allowed to eat, nor am I allowed to drink things and I can't speak because it just hurts so much. To be honest, I wasn't even thinking about how hungry or how thirsty I was. I was really just thinking like, how many centimeters have I dilated? Doctor just said I only dilated five. I'm like, five? I managed to dilate three on my own without even trying and I've only moved two more centimeters since this morning. Ever since my water broke, shouldn't that like have spread it out more? Ugh. And like the pain is literally like building up and it's becoming unbearable. So come around three o'clock, you know, I think my parents came already at this point too. The nurse comes in and checks up on me, right? And then I'm like, please get my doctor. I'm pretty sure that he's coming out right now because this hurts so much she asked me would you like an epidural the first couple times she asked me I was just like no I totally do this but then by I think that like the third or fourth time she asked yes please please give me the drugs <laughs> for like a good hour she goes away and the whole time I'm looking at Liz like where the hell did she go and then she finally comes back after an hour and says the epidural doctor went to lunch why would you give me the option when that person's at lunch I the doctor finally comes in and checks and then she's just like, oh, I think you're almost ready to go. You're ready at nine centimeters, right? And this is around like five o'clock and it's just hours and hours of pain. And I don't know if they finally moved me out of the room because I stopped whimpering and really started just sound like I'm dying. Or it was actually because like, you know, the baby is about to come out soon. So they finally started rolling me out of that C-section room. Again, keep in mind, when you're in so much pain, you can barely breathe, let alone talk. Liz has all my stuff and she's walking along with me, right? And whatever energy I have, I point to my hands. When I tell people this, they're just like, you should have sued that hospital. They left the IV inside the room. So the entire time while nurses were rolling me out into like a completely different side of the hospital, I was pulling the IV through the vein with the needle in this part of my hand. Honestly, if I could talk, I would have cursed them out, but I couldn't. And then Liz just flipped shits on them. She was like, what the hell is wrong with you people? And then even worse, once we got to the delivery room, they told me to get up and move myself into the other bed. When you're in excruciating pain, excruciating pain, you can barely talk, you can barely verbalize things, let alone physically move yourself from one bed to the other. Like I can honestly, at that point, even if I had not ate for like a whole week and there was like a stack of burgers onto the other bed, there's no way I could have gotten myself from one bed to the other. I think again, Liz had to yell at them for them to be like, oh, okay, she's pregnant. She's literally about to deliver. She cannot move on her own. At some point, the nurse who asked me originally if I wanted epidural doctor came back and said, oh, would you like the epidural? And I'm like, yes. I was like, did I change my mind within the last two hours? No. And then the doctor goes, no, it's too late. She's already about to give birth. And I'm like, of course. So the actual birthing process, my doctor uh, was not a friendly one. And I should have known that from the beginning. Again, since I was inexperienced and I had very low self-esteem prior to the age of 18, I just didn't speak up whenever I was being mistreated. But that doctor was not the nice this person. I was crying like throughout the whole time while I was giving birth. Again, it just hurts so much when she kept saying push and I couldn't push and I kept saying I can't, I can't because I, I'm, I'm trying my best and she's telling me I, I'm not even pushing. She starts yelling at me and she goes, I can't do this right now. Oh my god. I was like, I'm getting yelled at everybody. Keep in mind, I also had my mother yelling at me on the side. What did I tell you about having sex while you were young? See, like this is where you get. And then she called up my, let's just call him the sperm donor and was yelling at him like, oh, you knocked up my daughter and you're not even here. In the midst of attempting to push which what I think is pushing when it's not really pushing, I felt a snip. Why is it that I'm hurting even more than I was before? Out of whatever energy I had, I looked up at her, I was like, did they just cut me? And she's just like, I'm so sorry, baby. I'm so sorry. The miracle of life. It was just like a huge mess. I honestly don't know how I got through it because it was literally just a blur. Like I just became so exhausted that somehow David finally came out of me and I was like, Oh my god, like thank god. Is he breathing? Is he okay? I don't know why doctors do this, but you're very sensitive. Your body's like already exhausted. You're tired. Catches a baby and like throws him onto me and I'm just like, oh my god. 
Like I, I, I actually feel like another baby is about to pop out just because it felt like she threw him so hard onto me. They took him away after like a good two seconds. After they cut the umbilical cord, they just took him away and I was like, where the hell did he go? They were just cleaning him up on the side. My face is literally like destroyed. I was so pale and so tired. It looked like I had just like walked through war w with myself. Thank God it's over. And then the doctor says, okay, ready? Push. Push what? Like, wh what am I pushing? Like, that he's right there. I physically see him. What do you want me to push? And she's like, oh, you have to push out the placenta. <sighs> And the placenta coming out, it just feels like you really have to use the bathroom and you finally did. Right after the placenta comes out, like this woman is completely like ruthless. She grabs a needle and thread and just starts sewing me up. I mean at this point honestly I'm in so much pain that I don't really know the difference between uh, contractions, having it being cut, or a baby coming out of it. It all feels pretty much painful. It was quite the experience and from what I hear, not every childbirth is uh, this traumatizing. So yeah, that was my story of how I gave birth to my son. Probably even forgot some details because again, this was like 10 years ago. It's been a very long time. And when I'm looking at baby pictures of my son and I'm looking at like the size of his head, like you know while he's sleeping next to me i really do not know how they came out of me like that that baby has a huge head what's crazy is that my son was actually like three weeks early too so i just can't imagine if he was actually on time how big his head would be but you know what they say about big heads big hearts no matter how much you try to prepare yourself for childbirth, you really can't. Whether it was someone like me that had absolutely no idea what I was getting myself into, or someone who reads a lot of books and watches a lot of videos, it can help a little bit, but still, the pain is something that's completely indescribable. To be honest, even though it was a very painful and traumatizing process, giving birth is the easy part about parenting. It's Everything after that's going to be a lot harder. Getting up around the clock to feed them, start taking them to school, making sure that they don't fight with other kids or they don't get bullied, and then having heart-to-heart -heart talks with them, and then talking to them about sex. You think giving birth is painful? One day when you hear about your son being bullied in school, you're going to think like, oh my god, this hurts so much more. Parenting is definitely no joke, and parenting is not something that you just do for nine months and that's it. You know, it's even harder as a single parent. How you raise them is so important. If you mess that up, that's a whole nother human being's life. So that was the birthing story. I'm sorry about all the gory details and TMI. If you stuck around throughout this whole entire video, please give yourself a thumbs up by giving this video a thumbs up. And please put in the comments down below how much you appreciate your mother after this. <laughs> I love my son this much. I would not have changed my experience. Please give your mom a hug and tell her how much you appreciate her. And I think I grew a lot as a person because of my son. And I learned a lot from him too, as well as from this experience. Gotta use condoms. Just kidding. At the end of the day, I feel like the greatest gift that I got was my son. So that big old head was worth it. Love you.